Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's try to find the minimum force required to accelerate a block with mass m up an incline at a particular angle. Remember that the coefficient of static friction here is 0.5, the mass of the block 10 kilograms, the angle 20 degrees. So again, to overcome the friction force, we need to have enough force, well, not just to overcome friction, but to overcome the maximum friction force. Since the friction force is a reactionary force, the more force we apply, the greater the friction force until the net force exceeds the friction force, plus all the other forces acting against the force trying to accelerate the block. In other words, let's first draw the forces, take a look at it, and see what we can do here with this problem. We have the force due to gravity, which is mg, and since it's on an incline, we'll have the perpendicular component and the parallel component. The perpendicular component is mg times the cosine of theta. The parallel component is mg times the sine of theta. We then have the normal force pushing back. The normal force will equal the force here, mg cosine theta. And then we have a friction force. Now the friction force will be in the opposite direction of the motion the block would have without the friction force. Without the friction force, if this was greater than mg sine theta, the block would accelerate up the incline, so therefore the friction force will push in this direction. Force friction is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to mg cosine theta times mu. And so you can see now that there's going to be one force trying to push the block up, and two forces trying to oppose that motion. And in order for there to be an acceleration, you want the minimum force to be equal or greater than the sum of the mg sine theta, the horizontal component, and the maximum force the friction force can be. So let's write this as the maximum possible force for the friction force. So now we can write the equation that we want F net to be greater than zero in order to get the acceleration started. And the net force then will be equal to the mass times acceleration. Now the net force is all the forces aiding the acceleration, assuming that the acceleration will be in this direction. And so we can say that this will be the force applied, the minimum force required, minus the mg sine theta, the horizontal component of the weight, or not the horizontal, but the parallel component of the weight, minus the friction force max that can be applied. And you want that to be greater than zero. So that means that F min must be greater than mg sine theta plus the maximum friction force. And the maximum friction force is defined by mg cosine theta times mu, so the minimum force required would have to be greater than mg sine theta plus mg cosine theta times mu. So that means that the minimum force must be greater than the mass, which is uh, 10 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second square, times the sine of 20 degrees, plus the mass, 10 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second square, times the cosine of 20 degrees, times mu sub s in this case, and mu sub s will be equal to 0.5. All right, let's see what that equals to. So we have 98 times the sine of 20 equals, that would be 33.5 Newton, so the minimum force required has to be greater than 33.5 Newtons plus that would be, uh, let's see, 98 times the cosine of 20 times 0.5, and that would be another 46.1, let's call it just 46.1 Newtons. And so therefore, the minimum force required would be greater than 33 plus 46, that would be 79.6 Newtons, right, plus 33.5, 9.6 newtons. And so with that force, the block will begin to accelerate up the incline. And of course, after that, the coefficient of friction will, will drop down to the kinetic coefficient of friction, which presumably is less than 0.5, and there will be a significant acceleration. And that's how it's done.